How you doing? Today, I'm going to show you how to use the slip slinger. This is my invention of a product, similar product, if you will, uh, that uses slip trailing to your advantage. Um, slip trailing is normally that bulbous piece, right? You squeeze it, you have these little tiny uh, doodickies that are on the front, if you will, and you excrete your slip, um, slip meaning variety of liquid objects if you ask me because it doesn't have to be clay as in slip okay um, today we're going to discuss how you use the slip slinger here at the center at bicentennial art center um, so the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to check out from the office container it's going to have all kind of gadgets in it. it's going to have this hose it's also going to have a black smaller black i should say too it's going to have a couple straps in it just run that strap through the cell right there, like that, if you will, okay? Um, so if you're doing that, you're gonna take it, run it through, okay? If someone has left it undone. So both of them should be in there like that. You're also gonna get another syringe with an actual tube plunger in it. And then you're going to get this one and you're gonna get a kit of little small stuff, okay? Some of those are tips and some of it is the plunger device that you're gonna need to actually make the slip slinger work. You're also going to need this air compressor. I find that it works better than the black air compressor. Doesn't mean that you can't use the black one. It just seems that this one works perfect for how this thing is set up so far. Um, with that being said, you need to get this one. Uh, for this video, I have it set on a piece of foam just to help with the noise reduction. If not, it vibrates. You can use any piece of foam or if you don't care if it vibrates, then it's no big deal. You might want to grab the extension cord from the kiln room, I grabbed it. You can see it's red and black for now. It may change colors. It just depends. Just get an extension cord and plug it in somewhere safe. If not, plug in this device somewhere in which you have access to power, okay? As soon as you plug it in, you're gonna be live. So I'm not gonna turn it on until we absolutely need to. I'm going to prepare the slip slinger and kind of discuss some of the things that you're gonna find in this box. So this is the actual slip slinger device, okay? We're gonna just set that to the side for now. We're gonna pull out this one, this one, a hook device. So essentially it's a needle tool that's been ground down so it's no longer sharp with the tip and bent. You're gonna need that and you're gonna need this kit of stuff, okay? Uh, the first thing that you need to think about is what do you want to uh, design? Um, if you want a really thin liquid, you're gonna need to use a lot finer of a tip, okay? So there are some supply tips in here. They go pretty small. This pink one is fairly small. Uh, the, the smaller the tip, the less gritty the slip or um, medium needs to be which you run through this uh, device, okay? So if you have something that's really thick and gritty, you're going to have a hard time getting it through a thin uh, tip. You need to use a thicker tip, if you will, something like uh, this green one. It's got a lot larger gauge hole, if you will. Uh, you can see the difference between that one and this pink one. See the difference? A lot, lot different, right? So uh, something to think about, maybe investing for yourself is um, a mesh screen. Uh, this is 100 mesh, which is plenty to take out any grit that you may have. If you're gonna take, let's say, a sandy clay body and turn it into a slip that you wanna do slip work with, you wanna remove that grit. And the way to do that is run it through a sieve. My personal favorite thing to do is take a toothbrush, bend it, melt it, so it's bent into this position and then you, you know, Put your slip here in the top, over top of a container. So if this was what I was using, you know, put this over the top and run that through, grinding it through the sieve with the toothbrush, okay? You can also use um, a spatula works, but I, it just doesn't work as well. So it's something to keep in mind, okay? Um, today I'm gonna be using Bicentennial, um, the black slip that we have here in the studio. However, you'll see that that is pretty thick, right? So I've let, that thicken up over days. I took this out of the container and let it thicken up. I want more of a slip rather than a runny slip. A runnier slip, I got to use a really fine needle attachment like I was showing you earlier, which is fine. You can do that. However, I, I want something thick, right? I'm just doing this for video purposes. So I'm going to use just a waster cookie type thing, if you will, to do this demonstration on. You can, you know, abide by the rules of whatever slip medium you're using. You can use emical velvet underglazes, you can use BAC blend underglaze, you can use our actual slips. 
just need to be to a consistency which will flow appropriately through this needle and we'll talk about that, okay? So the first thing you wanna do though is fill the syringe, okay? With whatever your medium you're using. It makes your life a lot easier if you fill the syringe with the medium. Don't try to scoop it out and scrape it in, okay? So I'm gonna take and pull out some of this with the blender, okay? So I'm taking and sucking up with the syringe some of that medium. And what was that medium? It's just the bicentennial slip that we have here in house. However, it's thickened dramatically by leaving it set out for a couple days. You can see it's almost like a paste. Um, it's definitely not your normal slip. It's more like a slip you'd make for you know, clay, if you will. But in this case, this is what I want to use. Uh, you can use thinner, thicker, just depends what you want to do, okay? You then need to pull out the black plunger out of that little small case where you get the tips that black plunger is important. So you're gonna take your slip slinger. This is the other part that you need to make the slinger work, okay? You're gonna take and you're gonna fill this up with as much slip as you believe you need. So you see how it's all thick and gunky. I'm gonna to avoid touching that in the top because I want it to stay clean at the top. So I'm gonna take and just pump that slip medium down inside, okay? If you're using a really thin slip, it may behoove you to use this little cap device right here. There's a couple of them in here that have no needle in them. Screw this on to the tip before you actually start trying to put your slip in there. It's going to just run out, okay? But since I have such a thick slip, I'm not too worried about that. So I'm going to go ahead and tap that down. I filled up some in there previously and we just added more to it, okay? So I'm going to then take and remove that piece off and no longer need it. So it helps if you have a little container of water or something too. You might set all of your objects that you're no longer using in that water or just something to keep your hands clean while you're doing this. You're then gonna take that plunger, okay? This is where it's really important. That plunger has to go in straight in. You can't go sideways like this. It, it's gotta go straight in, okay? So you need to actually insert that plunger flush with the back and keep pressing it in until you get it inside, okay? You wanna then press down, and as you're doing that, you can see it actually pressing out slip, right? That's what we're looking for. I don't want that to happen necessarily right now, but that's how this device works, okay? So that plunger is important that it's in there and straight on, if you will. You don't want it to be cockeyed in the tube or else it's gonna give you a headache later. So I'm gonna clean off that slip. I'm gonna put a tube, which I wanna use on here for the tip. I'm gonna use a white one right now. I don't know the exact gauge. It's not too important, but I just know that the white flows nice for me. So. I'm going to take that and screw it on, okay? That's your first step. That's going to kind of contain that slip. If it's still dribbling out of there, there's a needle in here that you can stick in the end and just kind of hold that stuff in place, all right? Now the next part, okay? Um, I would personally take and just get this, you know, set it on here for now. You're then going to take the yellow attachment. This yellow attachment simply presses in to the back end of this tube device, so your syringe, if you will, okay? It helps if you kind of wiggle it in. Then you need to twist it, okay? So it's got these little notches right here on each side. You have to twist the syringe in, but it only goes one way. That's not correct. You need to twist it until those lock into place, okay? They're parallel with that back. Then the next thing is, is to take this and cinch it down. So I'm simply taking the black cord right here and I'm then going to Velcro it in place, okay? So simply taking this, strap, wrap it, run it around and Velcro that in place. Now I've created my pin, if you will, right? So this attachment is actually going to be the device that we use to draw a slip. So I'm going to take Kind of get myself cleaned up here in the, the manner. So I'm going to take the end of this, the other end. It actually plugs in here on the end of the air compressor, okay? So just simply plug that in. You might move this out of the way. Just make yourself so you can move, right? Uh, you don't need the Talisman sieve anymore. You don't need the toothbrush. Um, you might keep the kit around as an idea of using a smaller tip if you need be. The next part is, is to plug in uh, the cord, right, into your extension cord or into power. So I'm going to simply plug that in and as I start to do that, you're gonna start to hear air, right? That air is pumping through this tube and then dividing at a point 
which you can see right here, okay? That divider then connects to this top part and also now supplying air through the tube. In order to get this to work, I usually like to kind of just take and get that cording out of the way, maybe wrap it around your arm. Um, and as you hold this, hold it just like a pen or a pencil. It's gonna seem bulky, but that's okay, right? So you're going to simply hang on to it and you're gonna use your index finger to cover right here, right? As I cover that up, it back pressures through all this tubing and forces it to actually go through the main shaft of the slinger or syringe tube, right? So I'm gonna take, wrap this around, prepare myself as if I'm gonna actually do something, right? So if I back off pressure like I have right now, it's just free flowing out the tip, you can hear it. You hear that back pressure? Okay. As I let off, it stops flowing. As I apply pressure and cover up with my index finger covering the hole, you can actually start to build pressure. And as you build pressure in that tube, you can start to write or make dots like you see me doing right now. If it continues to flow like it's doing right now, one thing to think about doing is um, alleviating some of that pressure that's running through your main line with this back area right here, okay? You can see it's still squirming out of there. Maybe pinch this down a hair. There's a little pincher right here. As you pinch that, it cuts off pressure to your main line, okay? So as I'm doing this, I'm gonna start to build up pressure in the line and create designs. You can do this, you know, as like I said, on greenware, uh, leather hard, I'm doing this on just a bis tile right now. If you're using, let's say, a velvet underglaze or just an underglaze in general, you could probably do this, thicken it up a little bit, and it should run through there no problem. It may continue to dribble out of there just a tiny bit. Still, if that's the case, put more pressure on that line. Okay? Stop it from doing that. You don't need all that pressure to build up in there. You want to flow more out of the tube right here. And as you do that, you can see how it's dribbling less out of there. Okay? but I can still get it to do what I want. If it's not giving you as fast the results as you want, pull that pressure off of there. So it's a fine line balance of having too much pressure and it flowing out of there, having your slip too thin or whatever material you're using too thin. If it's the perfect consistency, which you will find depending on what you are using for you, this works really darn good. And it does not give you hand fatigue. The whole point of this object is to lessen hand fatigue from a bulbous pinching it with your finger constantly. All you're simply doing is plug in the end with a little bit of a pressure, and as you do that, it starts to pump out slip, right? That's the whole point behind this tool. So I'm gonna open this up a little bit more. Wipe off my tip, and you can actually draw, rather than, you know, writing like you are, you know. I'm going nice and controlled and steady. I'm not trying to do anything fancy. If you can make this thing work very fast, or you can make it work really slow. Just depends all about that consistency in the slip that you're using and the air. If you have too much air pumping through the line, you'll have a problem. If you have too little, you'll also have a problem that won't come out, right? So this stays in place just simply because of that Velcro strap. It's really important if that Velcro strap is not tight, it will not stay in place, all right? So keep that in mind. Um, if you want it to speed up, you know, open that up and, and turn the pressure up on it. If you're using the other pump, you can actually get it to go a little faster, you know, by building up that pressure. You can see here where I've just kind of held that so it stops leaking around there and I can move a lot faster however you can see that that's a lot sloppier and as I back off that pressure you can see that it's still flowing out of there right so you can even just set that back in the container in which you're working or crimp this down crimp that tubing down so it stops flowing okay as you do that it allows you to work you can leave this set to the side you know while you do something else. But you can see, as I drop it, right? You can see how you can get results, right? Smeared up the one, not a big deal. It's all for practice here. But it shows you that you can get little tiny dots or you can write your name. 
or a design. You know, I mean, it don't have to be as simple as I'm making it. You can get very complex with this tool. That's the cool part behind it from what I've played with it. Um, you can get, you know, pretty intense. You can get shape even to your line, which is really hard to do with the bulbous. So right now I'm building up my line and I'm getting these nice little variations in the thickness as the slip is coming out the tip. And as that's happening, I'm getting a nice little, like I guess you'd almost call it a textured worm effect. It's very cool though. Um, so once again, I'm gonna pinch that down, back my pressure off, because I don't need it. You can see how I've created that line texture in there, right? By just different variances within what you're using. Kind of cool. So that's the slip slinger, okay? When you are done with it, let's say that I was done. I'm done for the day, okay? The cleanup is the, probably the most important part of the process for the next user. If you leave this dirty, it's not going to work right for the next person. I'd say the first thing that you need to do is unplug this. There's no sense in, you know, cleaning it up with that being plugged in. You're going to dismount this piece from the rest of it like you inserted it, right? So you're going to take and velcro that and it comes right off as soon as you do that. You're then you're going to twist this loose. As you twist it loose, shimmy it back and forth. And as you shimmy it, pull away from you or down in whichever way you're moving, okay? Then take the tip off of there. I'm going to remove the velcro strap, set it aside, throw it back in the box. You're then going to remove that tip. You can see it's still got pressure inside that tube, how it's actually pressing out, right? So it's literally working based off of pressure build up in here. Another important thing to keep in mind is if you have air built up in there, you're going to have an issue. So, you know, I had some air because I put the slip in on top and then put the shaft in the top, the plunger, if you will. And that actually created pressure, and that's not what you want to have happen. There is an air pocket in there. So it wasn't as responsive. So when you fill this up, bang that backwards and relieve the air bubble up to the top and then squish out the air bubble. Does that make sense? If not, come see me. We can talk about this a little further. Okay, so you want to actually remove that plunger in your piece. Okay, so you're going to take that needle hook tool. You can see down inside that plunger. You're going to grab the plunger. You want to lightly pull on it so if it lets go not a big deal okay see how it just comes out of there if you pull on it and it seems stuck and you puncture a hole through the side of this rubber plunger it will not work properly so just make sure you take care of the plunger all right so i'm going to drop that inside my water bucket i don't need it right now um, you can extrude the rest of this out um, with the, you know the thing hooked up the device if you will you can push it through kind of depends on what you'd like to do. So I'm gonna actually insert it back in because it makes your life a lot easier if you insert it back in and just push it all out, okay? So you see how that's got air now trapped in there because it took it out? If I was doing this properly, I would bang this backwards and get that slip to the top and fill this gap of that air in there. Because the air actually is soft when you compress it. It's not the same as the slip, all right? So I'm gonna hook this back up. And do the same thing. You can see as I start putting that pressure on there, starts to flow out. So I'm not too worried for demonstration purposes about strapping that back on because you guys already seen it. I'm going to plug back in the compressor. And I'm going to excrete all the slip out of here. I don't need it, right? I'm going to move forward with cleaning it. So I'm letting it flow just out. I don't need it. You can see how quick it flows if, you know, you're literally trying to clean that out. So now the tube is completely empty. That rubber seal is all the way down in the tip so I can unplug it. That's the easiest way to clean this device as far as getting all that clay out of there. Now I'll go ahead and remove this. Go ahead and remove this. Take the end right here and make sure that there's no clay back up in there. So take a sponge, a clean sponge, not one like this, a clean one, right? And wipe that off, okay? And the next part is, is you want to clean this off, you know? Get all that gunk off there. Take it to the sink and rinse all this out. It does not need to be all corroded. Don't leave it like this for some, okay? So take it and clean it up. For purposes of demonstration though, I wanna make sure that you guys understand how to clean these. The best way to do that is use a small syringe that's in your kit. Screw that on. 
and pull some water up and through the syringe. As you do that, you can see how it turned dirty water, right? Clean that syringe tip. Make sense? So back and forth a couple times. As you do that, you're cleaning that tip for the next user, all right? A clean sponge also comes in handy. So there's one in the kit. If you need more than one, that's up to you, okay? So then you're gonna take your clean tip, throw it back in the little case, okay? Same thing with this, you wanna clean that off. So it helps if you have a clean sponge yet again. So taking that back and forth, clean it up, okay? Make sure there's nothing on there. Put it back in there. So I had another tip earlier I used. I'm gonna take that tip, I'm gonna do the same thing, screw it on. Not, you know, crank it on, just barely screw it on. Doesn't have to be he man on there. And now, clean it out. You can see the same thing. Build it up, got dirty. Clean it out until you stop seeing dirty water. Unless you have dirty water that you're sucking in there, you'll see as I do this, it gets less and less. Same thing, it's clean now. Take and unscrew this, save it for the next user, okay? Um, make sure that that rubber seal is cleaned up also. So the seal down inside of your original slip slinger, you need to take your needle tool and plunge it all the way down inside until you feel it catch on that lip of that plunger. If it pulls out, great. If it doesn't, try again, okay? just slowly pulling it back as it pulls out you can see how the easy just comes out of there and it just falls right now take this and clean it up at the sink take this and clean it up at the sink this is going to be your benefit of cleaning it up will make it so the next person does not have struggle okay if it's dirty this is not going to work out right so that kit's all cleaned up now I'm go ahead and just set that to the side put my lid back on so you don't lose any of the little pieces Set it to the side. Same thing with this. If this is clean, you don't need to do anything to it. You shouldn't have clay backed up onto the back end of this unless you've, you know, you've been a little messy, and that's fine. Um, it's part of clay. Okay. So take that. Just set it to the side. Put it back in the kit. Right. Slip slinger kit. You're gonna make sure that goes back in there. Off camera, I'm going to clean these a little better. It's just you know taking time. So I need to go back and forth, get the slip and the clay off of here. No, nothing major, but essentially I'm taking the sponge to this one on the outside to clean off any excess clay or slip, whatever you use under glaze, off of this. It does not need to be, you know, piled up on there like that. It happens when you fill it up. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to keep going from the inside back and forth several times, okay? Not a big deal, right? Just back and forth. Clean that up, okay? You should be clean on the inside. As you can see, that's not clean. That means I got some more work to do. So it makes sense. Now, the cool thing is, you see how I just plop that out from this one to this one? Same thing on this one. Clean it up on the outside. You know, at a sink, bucket, whatever the case is. The plunger pulls out of this original one and drops down into this one. Okay? So you can actually clean this one by plunging back and forth. Same thing. Make sure there's no slip, clay, whatever you're using left on these, or it just simply will not work correct. Correctly, correct. All right, so off camera, I'm gonna finish cleaning these out. Essentially, you should see no more clay residue anywhere on here, okay? On either of these devices, when you're done, you simply return the compressor, return the kit, close it back up, take it up to the front, turn it back in, um, make sure that you've cleaned it up well and you use the sign in, sign out sheet for the device. This is a slip slinger. Uh, it's very, very, very similar to the air pin. I don't know if you guys might check that out, but this is here at the center for us to use for free. So please take advantage of it um, and enjoy. Take care of it and enjoy, you guys. Come see me if you have any questions. My name is Jason. I am the Potter's Program Specialist at Bicentennial Arts Center, um, located in the green hallway, as they say, in the red room. So. If you have any questions, come back, see me. Thanks.